Welcome back to this channel for practice problems for actuarial exams. My name is Krzysztof Wasserzewski. You can find information about me at smarturl.it forward slash Jedi. My advice on how to pass actuarial exams is at smarturl.it forward slash pass. This video channel is at smarturl.it forward slash pass actuarial exams. Here you have information about online seminars and study manuals for exams P, FM, IFM, and LTAM that I offer. I direct the actuarial program at Illinois State University. You can find information about it at smarturl.it forward slash actuary. If you would like to offer a tax deductible donation to support our students, please go to smarturl.it forward slash help ISU actuary. Here's a problem for today for exam LTAM. As part of, mort of a mortality study, 10 newborns were observed until each either died or withdrew from the study. The table below shows the age of death or withdrawal of each individual. And here's the table. Uh, so you have um, the ten individuals and for each you have age of death or age of withdrawal. Part A. Show that the Kaplan-Meier estimate of S of 80 is 0.2 to the nearest point 0.1. You should calculate the value to the nearest point 0.001. Part B, part 1, construct an approximate 95% uh, linear confidence interval for the Kaplan-Meier estimate of S of 80 using a normal approximation and Greenwood's approximation to the uh, variance of this estimator. Part B, Part 2, construct an approximate 95% log transformed confidence interval for the Kaplan-Meier estimate of S of 80. Part B, 3, explain briefly why the log transformed interval is better estimate in this case. Part C, let S hat of Y denote the Kaplan-Meier estimate of S of Y for Y greater than or equal to 80 using Brown, Hollander, and Carver's tail correction. Let S had star of y denote the Kaplan-Meier estimate of s of y for y greater than or equal to 80 using efferent tail correction. Sketch a graph of s hat of y minus s hat of uh, y, uh, uh, star of y for y greater than or equal to 0. Clearly label the axis and show all key values. And here's the calculation. We calculate the estimate of S of 80 as approximately 0.1714 uh, in the table below. And you have uh, these values of uh, the times of the FYI, uh, the uh, number of those, um, the uh, people leaving and exposure, and then lambda calculated from that, and S of Y calculated from um, um, f from uh, the values given below. I had a 1 comma 0, 0 there. I, my apologies. This is a survival function. And of course it starts out at 1. And then the range of values, and these are ranges from one death to another or from departure time uh, to, to another. So the key moments, with, uh, these are the deaths and departure times, um, but deaths are the most important for evaluation of the survival function. And what you have is you basically calculate the empirical uh, survival function um, at each step and multiply it by the previous value. For part B, the variance of s hat of 80 is approximately s hat of 80 squared times the sum over i such that yi is less than or equal to 80 of si over ri times ri minus si. And we plug in those values from the table that, you, that we had there, and that's approximately 0 0.0234752. And the 95% confidence interval is approximately the expected value. We calculated 0 0.1714 plus minus 1.960, the, uh, the um, um, percentile of the standard normal distribution and uh, multiplied by the square root of the variance um, and that's approximately uh, from negative 
point one two eight eight seven five three two point four seven one seven three two four. Now the log transform uh, ninety five percent confidence interval is s hat of y to the power one over u and s hat of y to the power of u, with u equal to e to the 1.96 times the square root of the variance of s hat of y divided by s hat of y times the natural logarithm of s hat of y. And we plug in all those numbers. This comes out to be approximately 0 0.3703. And then the log transform 95% confidence interval is 0.1714 to the power of 1 over 0 0.3703 uh, to 0 0.1714 to the power of 0.3703. That's approximately 0 0.0085 to 0 0.5204. In part one, we saw that the linear confidence interval for S of y has a lower bound, which is less than zero. The log confidence, or ln confidence, really, interval gives, has, uh, no, not gives, I'm sorry, has bounds between zero and one. Um, uh, in C, in both cases, so efferent's tail correction and Corver's tail correction, the Kaplan-Meier estimate of S of y for y between 80 and 90 is S hat of y equal to 0.1714, the one we calculated above. Um, for y equal to 90 and above, efferent's tail correction just uses S hat star of y equal to zero, while Brown, Hollander, and Corver's tail correction uses an exponential function s hat of y equal to s hat of 80 to the power one y over 90, which is approximately 0 0.1714 to the power y, y over 90. In order to figure out um, the graph of the difference of the two estimators, we note uh, these key values, that s hat of y minus s hat of um, a star of y is 0 for y between 0 and 90, and then it's equal to 0 0.1714 for y equal to 90, and then it's, it converges to 0 as y approaches infinity for y more than 90. And the graph is below, so I'll show it to you in the moment. So this is the graph that we get, as you can see. Um, it's a bit strange that there's this zero value at the beginning, but that's the setup of, of, the, of the two methods. Please remember this is copyrighted material. The problem itself belongs to the Society of Actuaries. The solution is mine. Good luck in your studies and good luck on the test.